Hello and welcome. We're glad that you decided to join us today by downloading and listening to this week's featured message. We pray that you allow God to use this week's message to teach and inspire you while you listen. Let's pray. Speak to us again, Lord, in Christ's name. Amen. So, we're, we're dealing with the Holy Spirit. This, this third person of the Godhead who wants so desperately to keep your religious experience from being a saucer. Most people have a saucer experience with the Lord. No, a saucer won't hold much, not much depth. The Holy Spirit's job is to make sure that your relationship with God is real. A true connection, something that does not just flit away with every pressure that comes. And Satan, understanding the function of the Holy Spirit, has worked with great diligence and, I must confess, with great success to get a lot of us to be satisfied with a saucer experience in the Lord. Very little depth. Very shallow roots. And the end result is many will not stand in the latter day. And so we've been preaching and talking about the Holy Spirit for this whole year because it's, 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 it's my hunger that, that you reach the point where you're so sure, you're so sure you're going to be saved, nothing will deter that feeling. It is time for the members of the church to have assurance that they're going to be saved. Come on, folk. Not this wondering and ifing and maybeing and possibly and I hope I know in whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed to him. I think it's time for the church to have that kind of an experience. Something real, something tangible. Something that does not pass away with, with the arrival of cancer or the arrival of bad business or the arrival of financial trouble or the arrival of domestic intranquility. Something so deep that, 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 that the storms of life only bump up against you but never overcome you. It's time to have that. He's like Job when the rest of his troubles say, I know, I know that my Redeemer liveth and that I shall see him. Come on, somebody. And, and, and the devil gets so frustrated with you that he flees from you. Uh, the Bible says resist the devil, he will flee from you. Real power. Real power. And so we've been talking about these sons of Sceva. I love these fellows. They leave the Bible buck naked. They enter the Bible pages with clothes on and leave stripped of everything on their body. It's awesome stuff. And in between being clothed and declothed, this Scott, they attempt, Frank, to use saucer depth religion to work for God. They've heard about Paul, full of the Holy Ghost. Envious of Paul, full of the Holy Ghost. They've heard that Paul is such that, 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 that people take scarves 
and put them on Paul's body and then take them off of Paul's body and put them on sick people's bodies and the folk get well. They heard this. They, they heard it. They didn't see it, but they heard it. And they want to have that experience, Sister Hughes, so, so they, 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 they decide if this is happening in the name of Jesus, then we will use the name of Jesus ourselves. But they didn't understand that using the name of Jesus and having Jesus are two different things. And so when they attempt to use the name of Jesus... The devils cry out saying, well, we know Jesus. We don't mess with him. And we've heard of Paul because Jesus has used Paul, but we don't, we don't know who you are. And strip them naked. Well, I, I know we've talked about this before, but I, I don't care. I, I'd like to talk about it every Sabbath if I could. Because it's this saucer kind of religion. It's going to keep some of us from going in, pretending to have what we do not have and be what we are not. And so the Bible describes these boys. God did powerful things through Paul, things quite out of the ordinary. The word got around and people started taking pieces of clothing, handkerchiefs and scars and the like that had touched Paul's skin, then touching the sick with them. The touch did it. They were healed and whole. Some itinerant Jews exorcists. Ah, oh, that's the key. See, the sons of Sceva were messing around with some false stuff. And that's setting us up where I want to go today, Keith, because, because, because what they were, watch me, they were looking, Janica, for a thrill. See, a lot of folk think that religion is just a thrill, a feeling. And, and they wanted to have the feeling of power without really having power. So they were dabbling here and there, trying to have an experience, and they thought, well, if Paul can do it, we'll do it. We want to have this thrill of, of seeing somebody freed of devils. Put that statement on the screen for me, please. Many are looking for physical feelings. Let's put that up there. I read it before. You see that? Can you read that? Come on, join me. Many are looking for physical feelings, joyous thrills, marvelous shocks, which if they do not have, they are disheartened. In other words, they're, 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 everything about religion for them is, 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 you know, yeah, okay, keep reading. Really, the filling of the Spirit was not meant to be extraordinary. Let's finish it. It is a heritage provided as a normal experience. Now, pause there. That's interesting to me. Because Arlen seems to be saying that having the Holy Spirit ought to just be an everyday thing for Christians. Not some special experience brought on by some special service or inculcated by some special music or devised by some special circumstances. The statement seems to be saying that Christians ought to just be every day, every minute, just filled. Come on, somebody. Being filled for the Christian ought to be as normal as the color of your skin. Filled in the morning, filled in the evening. Come on, somebody. Filled at the supper table, filled in church, filled in the car, filled in the kitchen, filled on the... Filled! Oh, we didn't finish the statement. Yeah, okay. Let's go back up here. Go back up here. Go back to it. Uh, daily, start there, daily enabling us to live a holy life and to serve effectually as well as to meet crisis by special endowments. Go ahead. There need be no aesthetic joy. they got another slide for us. Barnabas never had the experience of Paul, yet both were filled with the Spirit. So filling is based not on... Now, in building toward this, we took time last week in the morning service to talk about the deception theme. What do I mean? Well... Satan has read the Bible. He knows that the Lord is trying to fill you. So if he can jump in you first and fill you with something that's false and make you think you've been filled with the real, 
then you'll stop seeking the real. Does that make sense? In that sermon last week for the morning service on a national day, we took the saints over to Joel 2 where he prophesies that in the last days the Spirit will come, pour it out on the young men, the young women, old men, so forth and so on. And then I took us further in that sermon. I'll pick up there now. And I talked about the gifts of the Spirit. You're turning with me to the book of 1 Corinthians. Evidences. Now again, if you're just joining us or you're just visiting today, we, we, we spent a lot of time this year talking about the Spirit, but now uh, we're, we're focusing on receiving the Spirit. We want to be sure we have the real thing. And, and in 1 Corinthians 12, the Bible elucidates some of the evidences of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, and join me, join me, starting in verse 4. You see it? Come on. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Everybody's reading. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh in all. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to probably with all. Everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. Who's in the Lord. Everybody gets it. There's no, there's no respect of person. Everybody has it. Who's in the Lord. Verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of what? Wisdom. To another the word of what? By the same Spirit. Verse 9, reading. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. Now, 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 now. Many got hung up. They got hung up when they got down to the bottom of verse 10, and they decided that the only gift is tongues. Missing the fact that there are eight gifts mentioned before tongues. Are you with me? Now, stay with your pastor. You see, Thorpe, the devil understands that we like exciting stuff. So speaking in tongues, that seems exciting. Now, of course, when I do my sermon next Sabbath and get into 1 Corinthians 14, we'll see what's really being talked about there because it says diverse kinds of tongues. Not just a tongue, but diverse kinds of tongues. And then it says that the tongues that are being given are tongues that can be interpreted. Now I have to resist getting into next week's sermon right now. Pray for the pastor. They don't stay on this week's subject. But there are those that feel like that that is just the gift. Now, uh, the devil is an expert at deception. Revelation 12, 9 says he goes out to deceive the whole world. But 2 Thessalonians, that, that second text that Scott read with us, go there, shows us the kinds of deceptions that the devil will manifest. 2 Thessalonians 2. Go there. Go there. Now, if you've never been in this church before, you're just visiting, we study the Bible here. We're not concerned about a lot of hooping and hollering. We study the Word. Get into the Word here. That's what we're doing here. Now, now, I need your minds. I need your minds. The devil has studied. And now I'm going to make a statement. It's a key statement in the sermon. There are going to be more people on planet Earth who will be lost over false religion then will be lost because of no religion at all. Amen. See, the world is full of people who claim to be Christians. 
So the devil is so shrewd, he says, well, rather than trying to counteract Christianity, I will just distort Christianity. Are you with me? And so in Revelation uh, 12, verse 9, he says, I'm going to deceive. But then Paul explains the deception. Look at verse 8 of, Reve of 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Watch this now. Whom the Lord shall consume, wickedness will come forth with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So whatever wickedness there is, it's going to be destroyed. Amen, amen. And he goes further. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and what? Lying wonders. Now we, we, we learned, we learned in, in, in last week's sermon that, that e even, even a miracle is not necessarily proof of the presence of God. Because Revelation 16, my brother Brown, Revelation 16 declared very clearly, Revelation 16 says very clearly that the devil can work miracles. See, folk, you have to be very nervous about the sensational. Because it's sensational and wondrous and miraculous, don't get carried away. By their fruits ye shall know them. By their fruits. Let's keep reading. Verse 10, 2 Thessalonians 2, everybody reads. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Now, 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 Frank, if righteousness is good religion, then unrighteousness is false religion. The devil will use false religion to make people think they're having a real experience in the Lord. See, we, 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 we don't want to do, Khalil, we, we, we don't want to do the simple stuff. Be nice to people. Come on now. Tell the truth all the time. Come on now. Yeah. Return a faithful tithe and offering. Not many, see, the amen's kind of decreased. <laughs> kind of de Return a faithful tithe and offering. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Come on now. Forgive your brother. Yeah, simple stuff. We want some sensational moment in the Lord. Yes! Calm down, Henry. Just do right. <laughs> On a consistent basis. Why look for some thrill, some high moment in the Just do right. Say you're sorry when you need to say you're sorry. Clean the house when it's dirty. Yeah. We want some, some miraculous event in our life to show we know the Lord. Just get up in the morning and be faithful. Yeah. But he uses deceptive righteousness. Now, now... I'm glad the text doesn't stop there. Look at the rest of it. Because, you're reading with me, because they received not the love of the truth. See, Joan, those who love truth won't be fooled by false religion. That's why, Jermaine, you and, you and the joy, you have to, have to stay in that book. You have to read as a young couple the Word of God. Study, Mike Holman. Study God's Word faithfully. Sylvia, as God has brought you to this experience, you want to stay deep in the Word. It protects your mind from the false manifestations of Satan. Truth is a bulwark. Gives you discernment. And then, Ron, if you just do what's right. I, I can't stress that enough. And, and see, see, you have opportunities every day to do what's right. You don't, you don't have opportunities every day to go to church. But you can start doing right as soon as you get up in the morning. Isn't that right? Yeah. Eat a good breakfast. Do right. See, eat a good breakfast. Do right. Driving to work? Don't lose your temper. 
You know, when you got in the car, the, car, the, the highway is full of idiots, people that don't have any sense at all. Some of them got their licenses out of Cracker Jack boxes and put them in their pockets and got behind wheels. They can't drive. They're out there. Don't let them cause you to lose your religion. Claim a victory. Cuts over in front of you. Blinker going this way, goes that way. 15 miles an hour on the 50-mile limit. Pray around right by them. See, I'm kind of venting myself right now. Last this week was a rough week, and the Lord gave me victories. Y'all been praying for me. I didn't call any names in my car. Didn't say you were in. I didn't do it, Frank. I said, God bless you. God bless you. Do right. Do what's right. Now, you're smiling. This is serious stuff. Those who love truth will not be deceived. Are you with me so far? Now, note the genius of the devil. Genesis 3, verse 5. Genesis 3, verse 5. Note that the devil is smart as a whip. Don't fool with the devil now. You're not smarter than the devil. His genius is amazing. Now, Genesis 3, verse 5. He's talking to the woman. I hate to read this chapter. Because you just want to reach inside the chapter and say, Eve... Eve. Get on back with Adam, woman. See, you know what's coming. Because we see, we, we living in it. See, if, if I could just shoot back through time, Eve, look at me. Look at this skinny yellow Negro. That's the result of you eating that fruit. I could be a big hunk of a guy like Adam. Now, here, look at me. Eve needs to know what's going on. <laughs> For God, he's talking to the woman. There she stands at the tree. Now, you know, a talking snake ought to make you think something. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe it's time to leave. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Yeah, you get out in your yard tomorrow and the snake talks. It's, it's, it's time. It's, how many of y'all know it's time to get running? Yeah, it's time to get moving. Yeah, this, this is not right. The snake is talking, y'all. She's standing there talking to the snake. For God doth know, watch it now, that in the day ye eat thereof, watch it, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, the pastor's building to a point. That's what he says to her. Eat and be like God. Look at Genesis 2 and verse 17. 2.17. Read. Read. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat it. Now, verse 16 says this, the Lord talking. For in the day what finisheth, that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt not surely die. Now, here's my point. Satan says to Eve, you can be more like God by doing exactly what God said don't do. I can have a happy marriage if I marry outside the church. Even though the Bible says don't yoke up with those that don't believe. How can two walk together except to agree? I'm just talking to you, Frank, because they don't want to hear this. I can be happy if I take this drink of liquor. Even though the Bible says wrong, strong drink is a marker, those that use it are not wise. In other words, I can be more what God says I should be by doing exactly what God says I should not do. It does not make any sense. Yet it happens every day. So the basis, the basis of the devil's deception is to make you think you can be like God by doing what God says does not say or having an experience that God does not require. Like speaking in tongues. And he, he, he's an expert at this kind. He, he is an expert at this kind of deception. Right, if you read Genesis 3, 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. 
he deceived mankind into believing in the immortality of the soul, which many still believe. That when somebody dies, the soul either goes to heaven or goes to hell. That souls don't die, though Ezekiel says they do. Genesis 3, 5, for God doth know that in the day thereof you'll be, your eyes shall be open. The, the doctrine of permissiveness. God really doesn't mind if you disobey him. Genesis 3, verse 6, when woman saw the tree was good for food, that was pleasant to the eyes, uh, uh, sin is worth the thrill. The doctrine that sin is fun. Genesis 3, 8, uh, God is only harsh and retributive. Uh, 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 in other words, uh, yeah. And then Genesis 3.12, Adam sends and says, The woman, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the fruit. Sin is God's fault. All these deceptive teachings, a false Sabbath, a false way of eating, a false way of handling our funds, Satan is an expert at deception, but note, Note, most of his deceptions are in the areas of the Christian belief system. And so we have Christian churches arguing with Christian churches about what the Bible says. Are you listening to me? There's this false teaching about the second coming that uh, when Christ comes, this premillennialism, premillennialism, when Christ comes, there will be a thousand years for people to get a second chance. When Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10 says, what you find to do, you better do it now. There is no anything after the grave. So Satan's major deceptions are in the area of religious beliefs. I want that to sink in. He uses the name of God like the sons of Sceva did to bless error. It's the ultimate deception. He seeks to deceive the world, but more importantly, he seeks to deceive the church. And so we have false measurements of God's power. False measurements of God's power. Jesus, talking about the Holy Spirit, made some clear statements. John 16, you're going there. John 16. Talking about the Holy Spirit, Jesus made, he, he, he told you what to expect from the Spirit. John 16, verse 13. Yeah. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, what will he do? Yeah. He's not going to guide you. The first thing the spirit does is not to guide you and to speak in a tongue. He guides you to truth. Do you see that? I just read the words of Jesus. The, 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 the spirit's first work is to get inside your head, not inside your mouth. That's his first work. Uh, John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. If I depart, I will send him to you. When, when he come, what's he going to do? Reprove the world of sin and of righteousness, of judgment, of sin because they believe not in me, righteousness because they, I go to the Father. On and he goes. Uh, the, the, the second thing, the, the Spirit first comes, guides you the truth, and the second thing he does is to convict you of truth. What's the second thing? What's the first thing? What's the second thing? Yeah. The Spirit's first manifestation as you is not some physical phenomena. He simply comes and says, this is the way. Then he says, you aren't following the way. He convicts you. That just worked. Then he says in Acts 1.8, when the Spirit comes, he'll make you a witness. But then Jesus warned us, Matthew 24, 24. Jesus warned us. And I think in these last days, the church needs to go back to the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, and read the warnings of Jesus. Matthew 24, 24. I want everybody there. I want everybody there. Ready? 
For there shall every come on, for there shall arise what? See, that's very interesting. See, 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 Karen, that's very interesting to me. Jesus' concern for the church is false religion. I'm still not sure that's thinking in today. And I'm not just talking, Max, about false religion in terms of speaking in tongues or not, or false religion in terms of uh, worshiping and, 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 and bowing down to some animal. I'm talking about false religion, the kind that, 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 that makes you think that certain things are all right when God has said they're wrong. False religion that makes you think that, it's, that, that, that God is so permissive that some things are just okay and God understands. God is upset when you lose your temper. He's not going to save you losing your temper. He's not going to do that. And, and, and a false sense of comfort. And then what he does, he overlays it with these, these experiences that are, that are feelings oriented. And, and so we start measuring church by how good we feel. Christianity is measured by how good you act. He says in Matthew 24, verse 24, there shall arise, finish it, there shall arise what? False Christ and what else? And shall show what? In so much what? Now, Robert, that's scary. That, listen, the devil will be so good at religion that if folk aren't careful, the top folk, the best folk, the elect folk would be deceived. It's going to be that powerful. That mind bending. In fact, over there in uh, 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 2 Corinthians 11, it says that he will appear as an angel of light. See, folks, they get excited by stuff. In fact, later on he says, if they tell you I'm there, don't go there. They say, I'm, I, 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 don't go there. I'm in the neighborhood. Don't go there. I'm, I'm in Israel. Don't go there. When I come, everybody's going to see me. But why does he warn you? Because he knows a lot of folks, as soon as they hear something new, they go running. Some of you are like that. Just like that. So I've been fussing at y'all for 16 years as your pastor. People run around the city of Washington waiting for the next best sermon. So and so speaking over here. Oh, I'm going over here. Yeah, they're going to have good church today. Good church is wherever God is. You don't have to run and follow some speaker to have an experience in God. Why? We're looking for some kind of something to hype us up. They got a great choir. All right, so what? On the judgment day, God's not going to ask you, how good was the choir? How good were you? Are you all listening to me today? We have to, we have to clear our minds of this sensational kind of religion that we feed and feast on. Who's preaching today? Oh, well, I, you know, he, if they don't move me, I'm going to be going. Who's, who's preaching over yonder? That is such an insult to the Holy Spirit. Are you saying you can't be saved unless you hear a good sermon? Let me see what that text says. The just shall live by sermons. Let me see if I can find that one. Don't wait on me because I'll be here all day. The just shall live by faith. Faith in God. Faith in His Word. The day is going to come if you stick with Jesus. There won't be any churches and any preaching. You'll be in the rocks and the mountains. And the only sermon you'll hear will be the pulse of God's Spirit in your heart and in your soul. Something irresistible. Nobody can take it from you. See, they can move preachers, but they can't take Jesus out of my heart. <laughs> you caught up in that. And a lot of us are. A lot of us are. I'm watching you. A lot of us are. And the 
book Last Day Events, the writer says, The Word of God declares that when it suits the enemy's purpose, he will through agencies manifest so great a power under a pretense of Christianity. Satan is an expert at producing what appeals. What thrills and excites. Now, let me say, as we bring this thing on down to the end, there, 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 there is nothing inherently wrong with something that thrills and excites. I like excitement. How about you? Amen. Don't be scared to say amen. Yeah, you're lucky. Yeah, I like excitement. It, it, it just can't be the main measurement. See, it's like that you experience when you first meet the person that you think you want to marry. I mean, I'm going to work in a second sermon right now. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> See, what you going to be saying after 50 years? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to blame Baker. Baker said after two years. That. that don't buy no beans. That don't pay no mortgage. Come on now. Oh, that, don't, that don't pay nothing. Momentary feeding thing. See, that thing has got to hang in there when the breath is bad. Things start to sag. Come on now. Yeah, you still got to be able to, you know, see what I'm saying? Oh, am I, am I, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to be practical here. See, you can't, you can't, you can't ride on relationships based on thrills. Oh, we had, a, we had a wonderful date. Well, the next date may be sorry. It's just like people, I'm talking to grown folks now, it's like people that get involved based on lovemaking. Nobody is good all the time. Did he say that? Hey, did he say that? Hey, what did he just say? I think he said, yeah. That was the grown folks part of the sermon. <laughs> you can't ride on that. But somebody that's there when you're sick, somebody that's there when you don't feel bad, somebody that's when you feel bad, somebody that's there when you, when, when, when you can't, when you don't have any money, somebody that's there and stands by you through the stuff. That's religion. Fourteen years ago, a great religious revival started down in Florida, city of Pensacola. Here's a quote from the book, <clears throat> Faith and Values, about that revival. Put it up there for me. I'm on page five of the sermon. Next one. No, go back, go back, go back. There's a quote before that. Yeah, here we go. Read, the century's longest running charismatic revival is going strong four years after it opened the doors. This was written back in 1995. Read, thousands of people packed the so-called Pensacola outpouring. Faithful exhibit physical manifestations. People jump up and down. Read on. Their hands raised as a choir of musicians sing and play contemporary Christian tunes. Some shake uncontrollably. They fall slain in the spirit or speak in tongues. And yet when you read the book of Acts, stay with your pastor. The second chapter, when the Holy Spirit is first manifest, you don't read about any of that. They speak in languages. Amen. But now the rest of this goes on. Are you with me? Amen. 
That is not the way the Bible describes the first outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And so in the book Revival and Reformation, we get this picture. Now we're ready for that quote you put up there first. We get this picture. Read, wherever the word of God has been faithfully preached, sinners sink their conscience, quicken, deep conviction took hold upon their minds and hearts. They were convinced of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment to come, and felt a terror of appearing in their guilt and uncleanness before the searcher of hearts. Read on, read on. The things they once hated, they now loved. And the things they once loved, they hated. The proud and self-assertive became meek and lowly of heart. The vain became serious and unobtrusive. Read on. The profane became reverent, the drunken sober, and the profligate pure. The vain fashions of the world. Look at the contrast. Look at the contrast. Folk, when the Holy Spirit comes in, deep things happen in a person. Deep things happen. Deep things happen. And it starts with the ending of self-lies. Self-deception goes away. In short, the ultimate proof I'm ready to end this thing now. Of receiving the Holy Spirit is not physical phenomena, but reformation of the life. Amen. Look at Titus 3 and verse 5. Look at Titus 3 and verse 5. Titus is a little book. Just before the book of Philemon, which is just before the book of Hebrews. Titus 3 and verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of, of regeneration and what? The renewing. And so we're told in 1 Timothy 4.1, beware of false spirits. Romans 5.5, 5, the spirit spreads love. Romans 15.13, the spirit brings peace and hope. And 1 Thessalonians 1 6, he gives us joy in the word in spite of affliction. Pray an honest prayer. Cliff said that last week. Find a quiet place. Find what? I said, find what? Take some time and seek the Lord. Find the courage, and this takes a lot of courage. To ask the Lord to show you yourself the way he sees you. Be prepared to be overwhelmed. With a sense of need. But also with a sense of your value. In that moment of that prayer, nothing sensational may happen. Nothing emotional may occur. But peace and satisfaction will emerge in your mind because you know for the first time in your life you've really made contact with Jesus. There's no substitute for what I've just described. There's no substitute for what I have just described. It is both intimidating and invigorating. So how did this thing of tongues become a necessity in people's minds? Well, don't be so quick to criticize such people. See, you have to learn to be in Christ without needing props. You didn't follow that statement. You have to learn to have an experience in Jesus without props. So when we have stress, we, we take a pill, a glass of wine, 
a cigarette, a movie, a song, a person to talk to. Human beings are always looking for some substitute for just being in Christ. We just want to feel better. Well, so do I. The best feeling in the world is a clear conscience. The best feeling in the world is to know that if Jesus comes today, I will be one of those who will say, Lo, this is our God. The best feeling in the world, Paul Buckmeyer, is to be able to sing that song, Nothing Between My Soul and My Savior. I don't need any props. I got him. The song is nice, but I don't need it. There will be more people lost on planet Earth from false religion then there will be people lost because of no religion at all different people, Holy Ghost, are taking that statement, but you gave it to me. Stop leaning on props. Just build a relationship with Him that is your Savior. Solid, lasting, deep, true, unwavering, no matter what's going on. Real power. We want real power. And it's important to me, Lord, that as a result of this sermon, we not be afraid to have feelings. There's nothing wrong with feelings. But feelings as a prop in the place of a righteous life is very dangerous. A righteous life will last through eternity. Feelings come and go in the moment. So talk, Lord, to your people. I never say it right in a sermon. Never say it right. Get done preaching, look back over it. You can think of a hundred ways I should have said it better. So you, Lord, you, you take the message. And reason with somebody right now. Please. If you have any questions about the message or would like to contact us with any prayer requests, please use the prayer request tool at the top of our web pages. We invite you to share this message using the tool at the top of our sermons page 
and check back next week for another message. Thank you for visiting us at www.cpcsda.org. Until we meet on Heaven's Golden Streets, may God continue to richly bless you.